Hey guys, welcome to the Unstable Opinions Podcast, that's what we're calling it for now. This is episode zero because we're kind of testing the waters, kind of working out some of the stuff that we want to do with this. We're not sure whether we're even going to continue if this is really crappy, (laughs) Um, but we thought it'd be fun to try out, so here we are. So this is basically going to be an entertainment uh, sort of podcast. Uh, we're just going to talk about some general stuff in the beginning. Talk about our and thoughts. And then, yeah. And then eventually Feelings. get into like. Not that. Oh. <laughs> get into a longer form review. So uh, I'm Chris, and I'm joined by my two friends. Yeah, uh, my name's Gabriel. And I'm Nick. And, and that's that. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that. There's nothing special no about else. us. We just like to talk about stuff. Like too much. So we thought we'd um, put it out there. Yeah. So this the first episode is going to be, uh, eventually it's going to be a review of uh, Joker, which came out pretty recently and we've all seen. Uh, but first, I just kind of want to just start the conversation a little bit. So what are you guys doing? Throughout the week? <laughs> um, doing pretty good. I'm pretty doing good. pretty good. I don't think so. Um, Watching uh, you try to <laughs> yeah, just, just trying to <laughs> get the software to work for about <laughs> an hour. Yeah, we I had I had I have this editing software that's kind of not really commonly used. So even though my microphone worked flawlessly several other times and I've used it, this time for some reason it just did not want to work. No matter what I tried, and I looked up on all the forums and like nobody had the same exact problem that I was having. So eventually I just uninstalled and reinstalled the program and of course now it's working flawlessly and it took like two hours to figure out like he said it's a big poop loop and it's probably not even going to be worth it so yeah <laughs> there's that <laughs> might not um, be working right now yeah you guys see on those big pikachus no yeah <laughs> nick's excited about that gigantamax that pikachu looks like i don't know be I, on the screen well, yeah, you haven't. Wait, have I don't you, know. Have you actually is. seen it? No, I you actually. Haven't? Okay, so you don't know, know how in the '90s, Pikachu, was, Pikachu fat. was fat. Yeah, he was so, like chunky. And then, and then, you know, Maybe I guess I, for some reason, like as he became the icon of the company, they kind of thinned weight. him out a little bit. Yeah. So, in in Pokemon Sword and Shield, they have like Gigantamax Pokemon, and are they just fatter? Pokemon? It's basically just big Pokemon, like. It, I feel like they kind of do that every generation where they yeah. have some kind of new form they want them to take, and it usually just amounts to them getting bigger and looking slightly different. And so um, they went and made Pikachu look exactly like the 90s, except he's like 68 feet yeah. tall. <laughs> <laughs> what like, the? It's awesome. It's, I, it's like I, I was not even interested in buying the game, but I just kind of I just want that to be a thing. Yeah, I like like plushes that resemble that. <laughs> yes, foot yeah. tall plush. Yeah, that'd be nice. If you want a sixty eight foot tall Pikachu plush? Yeah, and I could live in it. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, what else do you not, do with that? You I don't can't know. you can't like sure. get cuddle with it or anything. I mean you can. It's not ideal. I think it would be cuddling with you at that point. I mean I mean it's, it's not huge. alive. You know what I mean. You don't have not to really. Yeah, I don't really know what you mean. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess that's out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you know what else was really so, funny this week? I don't know. I was seeing Fortnite. Fortnite go died. Crazy oh, yeah. on Twitter. I was actually hoping he was dead, but whatever. I was. I mean, listen. I didn't. I, I, to- I told you this already, like through text. I I have no problem with Fortnite. It's like you you said like. You kind of it's kind of bothers you that that's the game that's kind of like the spearhead for games right now for everyone that doesn't play games. It's just that's what they picture. Yeah, everyone, everyone, but everyone can talk about it's, Fortnite. It's it's like it's harmless. Like to me, there's like there's always gonna be a game like that, and Fortnite isn't even like, you know, it's 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 there are f- far more. There's there's more games out there that are more complex than that, and I guess like. I don't really know how else to compare it, but it's not. I wouldn't say Fortnite is a terrible game. I mean, the community is like, you know, that's a whole other thing. Minecraft but... Hunger Games over Fortnite. <laughs> that's an old argument. Yeah, this is an old like... battle. <laughs> You've I, I... already lost. I don't know. I've had good experiences with Fortnite. We played Fortnite. Yeah, that one time. I played Fortnite for. I never won. That's another no, thing. I've I've never I don't think any. I've, I've only played like a handful of Battle Royale games and I've never won. Do you know what we're doing tonight? I've, boys? I've won a uh, uh... Minecraft Hunger Games in my oh, time. Oh, I mean, yeah. But that's like, you know, 
It's a mode. Like, the only the I think the only battle royale games I've actually played are uh, Fortnite and Tetris ninety nine. I've tried to play. Oh, I've never won in a Tetris ninety nine. I've game. gotten close. I've gotten like third place. Um, I've tried to play PUBG, mm-hmm. and my computer crashed every time. So <laughs> yeah, that's epic. Yeah. Um. So I I've technically still never won an actual battle royale. I mean, have game. you ever played PUBG? No. I yeah, wouldn't that count happened, that as that playing. with League of Legends, like, a few years ago. I tried to install League of Legends on my old computer, and it took three days and got to 99%, and then it canceled the download. It took three days? You just to I, had, I said on my old computer. But you I, let yeah. it go my three old days. You like, didn't just say, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, I just let it sit. <laughs> and then it got to 99%, and it canceled. And I was like, okay, well... I guess I'm not going to play League of Legends. <laughs> I didn't know League was that important to you. That it was. I mean, you would, you apparently would it wasn't it important enough for me to retry <laughs> the download. But it was fun. Yeah. The the five games of League I've ever played, but I was never good at it. Yeah, I was that way it's, with Hearthstone. It's not my kind of game. Yeah. See, Hearthstone, I, was, I had I was more okay fun at Hearthstone, but it just got boring. Like it was super repetitive. Yeah. It. I didn't want to really get into it. Because it takes, I mean, you, you got to pour a lot of time into it to build decks and uh, collect yeah. new cards. And too then, much thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and I just don't, I don't play a game where I don't have to think. Like Gungeon? Like Gungeon. Let's Speaking talk about that. Gungeon. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I now we've gotten game. some general stuff out of the way uh, before we get into the, to the longer review. Gungeon. I kind of just, I thought it'd be cool, just a cool little segment to kind of just go around talk about like what we've been playing or watching like games or movies just anything in general that's had our attention recently so gabe did you want to go first um you seemed pretty yeah so i talk about gungeon um i got when did we get gungeon like Uh, over a year ago or was it less than a year ago it was probably over a year ago yeah i haven't um I, i played it a lot back then and then I took like uh, maybe half a year where I just didn't touch it. Yeah. And then recently, for about like a month and a half, I've been playing it like every day. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see I you did. play it every day. Like. Yeah, I have so many hours on it now, and yeah. I don't know why I've been getting like back into it. Yeah. It, was, it was it was funny addicting. because like I I bought that game first mm-hmm. just because it was on sale, and then I told you to buy it, and then like literally. Within a few days, you already had more hours in it than I did. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just really like. I uh, think I played likes. it once with Gabe, and I was just like, "What's going on?" He's like, "Just follow me. We got this." We so got like, this. Okay. Did you like co-op? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I mean, I I had seen people play it before, like a long time ago. Before it, before I actually ended up buying it, it was just like I think it was like two bucks on the eShop. And I was like, I'm curious, and it's probably not going to be this cheap for a long time. So I bought it, and it was another thing, like a game like Spelunky, where I don't think I'm ever going to beat it. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to be committed enough to beat it. Uh-huh. But it's still, like, something that I'll keep going back to just if I want to, like, kill time or something. I mean, I've just been getting invested in, in so actually, like, finishing the game. I've been collecting the bullet parts yeah. to, um, I think I got two of them so far to actually kill the past. And then I don't. I've been like getting. Addicted. I always forget that's the premise. Of yeah, the, the whole game is you're actually supposed to do something. It's not just trying yeah. again and again. But I compl- I did not like know about that at all back when I st- first started playing it, and now um, I've been watching like YouTube videos on Gungeon. Everything is Gungeon. Every day mm-hmm. is Gungeon. I've been watching this guy uh, named Huts, and I uh, he does amazing uh, runs. I watched and, someone like that for Spelunky. Uh, Banana Source Rex. Have you ever yeah. heard of him? Uh, you've, I think you've told me about him. Yeah, because he sounds pretty familiar. Like it's not yeah. a name I could forget. Yeah, I I I subscribed to him <laughs> only for like really awesome Spelunky runs that he did back when Spelunky was like recent. Like it, it had recently mm-hmm. come out. Uh, but I don't think he, I don't think he ever posted on YouTube again after that. So, yeah, Nick. So this week, um season premiere of arrow mm. oh and so like 
I was expecting it just to be another season six or seven where it's not that good. But season eight of Arrow and season six of Flash is like this real build up to like the final. Yeah, the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Or... Yeah, so it's like it really feels like they're building up like they did for Avengers Endgame, but like kind of more because it's like in a TV show form. Yeah. So like I'm more excited than I was before when I saw the first episode of Arrow and they like the end of the episode was a giant plot twist where I was just like, oh shit. Yeah, this is the last season, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Which is depressing, but also good because they're making it the best. Yeah, and it's gonna be weird to like have the Arrowverse without, without Arrow, Arrow in it. <laughs> but it's kind of like having the MCU but without Iron Man in it. Yeah, but except he's returning as Black Widow. But they don't call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not like they call it the Iron Man verse. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> it's it's like, called the Arrowverse. Yeah, and he's not in it. But you know, I really need. I really want to get back into Arrow. But I need to I get say, into it in the first place. I say watch. It's really good. I say watch. Say what? Skip season six, but season seven was really. That's good. the season that season. You six. sent me a list. You sent me a list of what seasons to watch of mm-hmm. each show. Yeah, didn't you? Because I said skip season three and four of Arrow if you yeah. really wanted to watch them because they weren't good. It do, yeah. it doesn't have anything important to the plot that I'm I mean. Be there's about. a few episodes in season four. Was mm-hmm. that Damien Dark? Dark was. Five, I thought it was five. No, that's Prometheus. It's like the best villain. That, no, then yeah, that's four. Yeah, because he killed a main character off, but that's that's all. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's because like, I don't like to skip around when I watch a show like that, but I also like don't want to be turned off from it because of a crappy yeah, season. Yeah, because like, Flash season three, <laughs> garbage. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was really, I, could, I watched. It I, got bad fast. I got halfway through the season. I'm just like, this is the worst season of a superhero sh- show I've ever watched. I'm mm. like, I can't do it. Yeah, but I'm glad they're getting they're getting better. They're getting better. That's why I'm like motivated to get back into it. I don't know. I, I shows like that. Like even if they get bad, I still have to keep yeah, watching them there's through. The crossovers, and you're like. <laughs> That's the one part you want to watch, but you have to watch everything Yeah, and else. I don't like watching something and, like, not knowing everything that's going on just because I skipped around. Yeah. But, like, I can't watch <laughs> Supergirl because it's garbage. I did that with, um, I tried to do that with Supernatural. When I I'm was trying Batwoman, it. and it's not that bad, but, like, Twitter hates it, so I don't know how to feel. I never even started it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't start that yet. Feel. You don't, know, you don't know how to feel about it because Twitter told you your Twitter's opinion Twitter's hating is wrong. it, and I'm just like, it's actually kind of good. It feels like Batman, but it's just a woman, so like... Yeah. Well, what's Twitter saying about it? Twitter just hates people, so... Oh, okay. You know... That's not anything Twitter, new. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's not actual evidence so that Chris, it's bad, what about it's just you normal. This past week. <laughs> so, <laughs> this past week, I've been going to the library a lot which I've been slowly realizing is criminally underrated because they have DVDs at the library. So if, and they have like recent movies too, like not like, you know, like first release movies, I guess, like not as recent as something like Redbox, but I've found movies that have come out like a year ago there that I've been wanting to watch, but it's like anywhere else you would need to pay for them. So I went to the library to like find one movie that I wanted to watch, and I came out with like six. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I watched I watched a ton of movies that were really good. I watched uh, Good Time with Robert Pattinson. Uh, what else did I watch? I watched Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That was really good. Um, there's a, there's a few others I'm I'm forgetting. It'll take me forever to think about them, but. I've just been I've been watching a ton of movies uh, just that I rented that I've been wanting to I've been meaning to watch for a long time uh, and it's really good to like watch a lot of really good movies back to back to back because the quality of a lot of the movies I've been watching recently have kind of been like inconsistent like one of one of them is like really good one of them is horrible and the other one's like decent um so that's that's kind of where I'm at right now, and I'm still, like, going back and, like, renting more stuff that I want to watch, and I probably will keep doing that for a little while. Um, 
but just get everything that the library has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, eventually, eventually he's gonna clean them out. He's gonna be like, um, well, I lost your movie. <laughs> well, I, I need more. <laughs> yeah. So Chris is the biggest movie junkie I've ever um, known. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Just. I mean, I I was knowledge. going to the movies like when Movie Pass was a thing. Oh, I was going to the movies was, like three times a week. When Movie Pass was a thing and it worked, that those were good <laughs> times before it broke. Yeah, yeah and those now were I have really uh, good times. Now I have Regal Unlimited, which is basically the same thing. It's but movie, more expensive. It's just an expensive Movie Pass, which makes sense. Yeah, because Movie Pass was obviously like unsustainable from the beginning. I was just like, you know, I'm gonna get it and enjoy it while it lasts, and then you know, when it goes under, it'll be sad. But you know, everyone will have seen it coming, and of course, that happened. Yeah, um, but a lot of movies. Yeah. Not a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a lot of money. That was the best part. Um, didn't it start breaking like once in Avengers: Infinity War dropped? It was around then. It yeah. was. It was about a year after I got it, which was like August of like, I want to say like 2017. I just probably. remember a lot of people like they had no problems before that. Then Aven- Avengers: Infinity War dropped, and yeah. Marvel was like, "Why don't we kill this company so they don't take away our money?" <laughs> well, I don't even think it was Marvel's <laughs> fault. It was just. They started changing the rules because, you know, because their business model yeah. wasn't sustainable. They were losing money yeah. really, Especially really quickly. People were probably going and, like, selling the tickets for Avengers. Cause yeah, and going, like, multiple it. times and everything. So, like, they, like, changed it to where, like, certain movies didn't show up in the app or, like, certain yeah. movies you needed to pay a little bit more in order to watch. And, or, like, they had different subscription tiers. It was just the whole thing just – it was a mess. And then eventually, you know, it just kind of stopped working entirely. And it kind of, like – limped on for another year but i think like a month ago or something just the service just completely shut down entirely which is kind of it's kind of sad but you know everyone saw it coming from a mile away yeah if you just think about it it doesn't work it's, yeah it's not it's never gonna work. i mean maybe it works when the movie theaters actually own it and it costs like twice as much regal on them <laughs> exactly but you know 10 bucks a month independent company the movie theaters don't gain anything from it uh it's just it was destined to fail Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean aside from the the library movies and all that i the most recent thing i saw i mean i went to a a drive-in theater last night which is really cool If, if there's one nearby you i recommend it uh just make sure that you account for the fact that your car battery is gonna be running for a while so you might want to bring like a portable radio or something um but I went to the drive-in and I saw Zombieland Two, uh, which was pretty good. I watched Zombieland One right before I went to go see Zombieland Two, so it is basically it does kind of feel like even though it takes place ten years after, it does feel like a just the continuation. Like you could watch them together as one long movie, and it would be consistent. Because so like Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Pretty much. I mean, the like quality is basically exactly the same, and everything about it is exactly the same except for the storyline. Like, it's it's the same exact, like, kind of jokes and tone, and, like, you know, there's, like, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a few new characters, and, like, but I, the, the general, like, like, you know, especially having watched Zombieland 1 right before going to see it there they are very similar movies um i think it works well as a follow-up it doesn't really do a whole lot differently but because it came out so long after i don't think it really had to it just you know people wanted a sequel they wanted more of it so i think it did its job did they continue the rules yeah like from <laughs> yeah. they left off yeah oh no, I, I i there's this one joke in the movie i don't really want to spoil it um, but there's one really long joke in the movie about the rules, um, and you, you'll probably know it if, if you go see the movie. You'll know it when you see it. Uh-huh. Um, but I thought it was really funny. Okay. So now speaking about jokes, let's talk oh, about sh- Joker. Yeah. All right. So now. So smooth. Yeah. So now we're actually getting into the real review, which is uh, the main event, I guess. Uh, Joker. Um, spoiler warning. Yeah, yeah, just um, right up front. We're going to be talking about... You gotta have seen it. Yeah. I mean, I, what we'll probably I mean, do is, like, just give a quick, I guess, I don't know. We could do, like, a rundown of the plot or something. Yeah. Just to kind of... I think you did it well. Yeah, um, I did. Right like, before this. Yeah, right before we just started, basically so. talked about it. So, if you haven't seen Joker, I mean, 
real quick, let's just give our thoughts, I guess, just whether they should see it or not. Okay. I think, to me, first of all, it's rated R for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I th- to me, it was probably one of the best movies I saw this year. Probably in top two, along with Avengers Endgame, because mm-hmm. how can you... Yeah, it, yeah. It's like, I don't know how they... They're very it, different they're movies. Ra- they're Endgame very is very much movies, like an event. But, like, they're both so good to the point I'd see them so many times. Yeah. Except I've seen Endgame so many times, I can't see it anymore. But, <laughs> yeah. But, like, I want to go back and see Joker. I'm just low on funds. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. like, I say it's a really good movie. And as long as you're at that age of 17, you can go see it. Yeah. Yeah, Joker is different from any movie i've like ever seen it, it's just it's trying to tackle different like different things entirely than any like other comic about joker has tried to do or the dark knight it's definitely different mm-hmm. like it's a different take on the joker yeah um yeah i'd agree with nick like <laughs> if you're not 17 <laughs> if you're yeah. you're younger than you know what's funny says, too I like there was a whole thing about this movie like before it came out, you know, like the the whole like media stink surrounding it that it was gonna like encourage violence or like it, it, it didn't. It was like <laughs> nothing happened. The, it's not even that violent of a movie. Like you know, I would say it earn it does earn its R rating, but it's not really entirely because of the violence. Like there's only a couple scenes in the movie that I would think are like pretty like vulgar like like i guess it's just i didn't really the violence didn't really strike me as like a prominent thing about the movie it's not really about that you know like i feel like the one reason that the media actually hates this movie is because they sort of attack the media like low-key throughout the movie oh it's, yeah I like mean, they kind of do yeah but, they're like, like, <laughs> but like they're not wrong yeah but it's like I don't know how to feel about it, but they were like they attacked the media in a way they didn't mean to attack it, but they shot a lot of. Fo- I think it's also just because it's a popular character, so they know a lot of people are gonna go see it. It's the same kind of thing where like you know, Deadpool parents are gonna take their kids to see Deadpool even though it's rated R, and then complain about the content of it, <laughs> even though it was made clear that it's not meant for for younger kids. They and put the word fuck. <laughs> in the trailer why would you take your <laughs> six-year-old to see the fucking movie because yeah. it's a superhero movie it's gonna oh, be it's great cute. it looks it's like cute. spider-man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i guess it's the same kind of thing but anyway i guess i kind of got off track but yeah my my basic recommendation is i really loved it uh i don't want to say too much about it before we get into spoilers but uh it's a very different it's not it doesn't really feel like a comic book movie it's very much a character study, like, drama. And if, if you go into it expecting something similar to something like The Dark Knight, you're not probably going to get what you want out of it. I mean, Batman's but, not even in the movie, so... Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah, I just mean, like, because most of the movie is the build-up to him becoming the Joker. It's not really him being the Joker the entire time. So if you go in expecting a lot of that, you might be disappointed. But I just think as a movie overall i think it works really well it was so. the best character development i've seen in a long time yeah and that's something i love about movies is when they like they emphasize those parts of a mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. like you can see everything that they're experiencing yeah so i guess we're gonna get into spoilers now so if you haven't seen this movie we all highly recommend it please go see it uh and so now i guess Probably the first thing I want to talk about is I really like how, like, it doesn't really feel like... One of the things I was worried about, especially, like, even while I was watching the movie, was that when he became the Joker, it was going to be jarring. Like, it was going to be like he was this nice guy, and then just all of a sudden he just became, like, a deranged, like, comic book villain. It's like you see a little bit of that at the end, but it's like the change isn't really ever like. It's not really ever like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, like it was at a steady pace to where the change made sense throughout the movie. Like in the beginning of the movie, he's a clown. He's happy with his job. 
and then people shoot him down. Well, is he happy with his job in the beginning, though? Because the first shot of the movie is him crying in the mirror yeah. and trying to make himself smile. <laughs> I mean, I kind of... I mean, like, no. he, enjo- like, he enjoyed the, like clown part of his job like he made like making yeah he liked yeah. being a clown but then like yeah once everything started going he got beat up mm-hmm. and then everything started going downhill for him and like you saw throughout the movie after every event happened he just got worse and worse and yeah worse. the the change was very subtle like throughout the whole movie mm-hmm. um i feel like at any point like you saw him it with his like clown makeup on even in the beginning of the movie you can like sort of see where it was gonna go and then at the end it, it all made sense that mm-hmm. it, it kind of went there with the way that everyone was treating him it's not it's not about like just someone going crazy it's about people making people yeah. crazy yeah and it's like i i really liked um like just kind of there you you see like hints of it throughout the movie where like you know he said he says stuff like you know after he kills the guys on the subway train like you know he, he tells the guy at arkham asylum he's like you know i did a bad thing and i thought i should she should have felt bad about it but i really don't <laughs> and then just like it just makes like you know there's little things like that like that's i guess that's not really a little thing where he's you know he's just outright stating it but you do kind of see hints of him like you know not really having remorse for people because of the way he was beaten down and then just by the end of it like especially like the scene where he's like dancing on the stairs and stuff and he's just kind of embracing the most iconic scene of 2019 yeah he's just kind of embracing the the psychopath that he's become you know it's just it's satisfying after everything that he's been through but it's also like even though it's like satisfying because he does become like a character that we love it's like it's also sad because you are like rooting for him, not not to like become a psychopath and kill people. But you're you ro- want him to you, be you happy. Feel, but you're sympathetic towards him. Yeah. Like you don't want him to turn and like you know you want things to work out for him, but think they don't, and then it ends up turning him into that kind of person. It's just crazy how like so many bad things were happening in that movie, and I was yeah. just so content with him being like evil <laughs> yeah it's like, i was just so i feel, I feel I like it gave like a real like the media hates it like we talked about that but yeah. i felt like it gave a good message to people like this is what you're doing with <laughs> yeah. other people this yeah. is what if you are a dick to someone they're going to become a even bigger dick yeah that's how the world has worked for a long time and then maybe they don't become the joker it. but, they, but they still, will, there was no reason it doesn't lead for the, to good things yeah the joker didn't people. have to exist in that like universe without yeah. everything that had happened to him like how, happening it, he wouldn't have turned into that yeah and it's like you know i i another thing i really liked about it is just how much of a shithole it portrayed gotham as yeah because it's like <laughs> You know, and even in, like, a lot of the Batman movies, it's, like, you know, Gotham is the most crime-ridden city in the world, and just, like, you know, it's it's very grim. But, you know, Bat- Batman's always, like, you know, like, saying, like, it's not beyond city. redemption. Like, you know, people are good at their core. Um, but I don't know how but, good these like, people are at their core when they, when they see someone get murdered on TV. Everyone gangs up and starts destroying Well, the yeah, city. see, but that's the thing is that, you know, the <laughs> villains in those movies, you know, they see Gotham as just, like, this shithole like, <laughs> of just horrible people that should be wiped off the map. Or, like, just, like, used as an example, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like And you... this movie, you kind of see that sort of perspective from the villain's point of view. Like, you see why villains in the Batman universe would see Gotham that way. Because in this movie, Joker does nothing. Every Like, basically everyone in Gotham just beats him down. You're like, you know, like, his mom's insane and lies to him about his heritage. When he goes to try to find out about his heritage, Thomas Wayne just... It says that Sucker his mom's crazy him. and punch it yeah punches him <laughs> in the face like you know there's there's the you know the guys on the train there's the girl that he thought he was dating for most of the movie that he finds out like you know she wasn't even really like mean to him but you know it's it's just that kind of whole thing where just everything <laughs> in gotham was kind of working against him now i did i saw something that um 
like you you mentioned how he hallucinated the girl mm -hmm. and people think so um that the whole end scene where he gets out of the police car and is like dancing on top of it and all yeah. the people are um like in his you know yeah. his his people they that people think that that whole part is hallucinated um but then the part about um the Wayne parents getting shot is actually real and then mm -hmm. him in the um what what the, is it, like the interrogation the, room afterwards yeah, that's yeah. also real because it's like you know if he got out of the cop yeah, car yeah if he got out of the cop car how would he room? get captured again yeah it, with all of his su supporters around him <laughs> like i don't think they would let him get taken probably again. not but I don't know. But maybe that's just, like, fueling his ego and trying to turn him into that. I guess. Per, like, maybe he wanted leader. to be there. Yeah. Maybe he's getting, like, a vision for who he wants to be now. Yeah. And that's where the Joker starts. Mm -hmm. It sucks that we probably won't see more of Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. Dude, I <sighs> saw somewhere that they're talking about another Joker movie with him. Yeah. But they don't know. Like, they're still in the talks yeah. about Cause it. Because everything, like... I guess the from the filmmaker's point of view, the everyone was saying like you know like this is a standalone movie you know it's not part of the DC universe it's not intended to set up a ton of stuff it's just a character study you know like Joaquin Phoenix didn't want to be like you know signed on for like ten more movies he just wanted to be a part of yeah. this one what same same thing with a lot of like I think it's the same thing with Todd Phillips the director but you know now DC saying like you know. Joker's gonna set up DC Black, which is like this other label of DC movies, <laughs> and they're talking about doing like sequels and stuff. Because DC, as a company, obviously wants to do sequels with how well this movie's been received. But you know, it's just I don't know if they're gonna be able to get Joaquin Phoenix back. I don't know. What if he's I also do saw it. is that like they might use Joaquin Phoenix as like a bridge to like build the actual like Joker because. You saw how, like, weak and frail he was throughout the movie, and, like, the yeah. Joker in the comics isn't that. Mm -hmm. So, like, it might be, like, someone's encouraged to become the actual Joker in the uh, that's movie. sort of yeah. That's sort of how it went in uh, Gotham in the show. Because I, I don't know if you guys watched it. I don't. Yeah. I didn't. Um, I don't want to spoil much about it, but they do touch on Joker, and, like, it's not... The first Joker we see isn't really the actual Joker that Batman fights because Batman's mm -hmm. like Bruce Wayne's a child. Yeah, still. he's a child. Too. But it's it's like Joker he gold. inspires the rest of like the the Joker character, and that's and probably he will eventually why, become the. That's Joker. probably why like if like it seems like Joker dies and he comes back and like it's because there's multiple it's, Jokers. It's a different yeah. person. Yeah, I mean that's po that's that's possible. Um, and I feel like if they were to continue in this universe, that would be the excuse. That'd be the way that they do it's it. It's weird. It's odd, though, because, you know, they're continuing the DC Extended Universe, but, like, so, like, they're recasting some people, but not others. Like, you know, they did this, they did Suicide Squad, and now they're doing The Suicide Squad, and it's sort of a reboot but it also has some of the same characters the dc universe and now... might be the most confusing thing <laughs> on the face of the planet yeah They're just i feel like they, they would want to like trying till they get it right and yeah it doesn't really work like and that. it's like at this point we have no idea whether the robert pattinson batman is going to be like a sequel to joker or whether it's going to be a prequel to the batman v superman batman i'm just i mean they can you know what dc does best is they have this thing called the multiverse. They want to clean up everything. <laughs> yeah. Crisis on Infinite Earths. CW can just shut everything yeah. in the DC universe down. Did you see... I mean... Um, did you see... Well, I mean, I haven't even seen it, but I saw this one scene from Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, which just came out, and it's like... Apparently it wasn't meant to be a parody of Endgame, but it's a very similar scene to the end of Endgame where they, like open a bunch of portals and all the different versions of the Teen Titans come out from <laughs> all the different... Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, I didn't watch that movie and I probably won't, but I, I liked that. <laughs> I think the the DC movies are now just as uh, messed up as the timeline of X comics. <laughs> oh, no, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we can talk about the, okay. the X-Men. At least the X-Men uh, can explain themselves a little bit. 
Deadpool yeah. fucks up the timeline a lot. Oh, wow. Well. They, yeah, they came mean, out with Days of Future Past, and then they came listen, out with, with <laughs> Deadpool, and both of those had time travel. Yeah. Deadpool 2. X-Men was fine until they started setting them in eras where they would, it was like, it was James McAvoy, Professor X, but in five years he was supposed to become old, <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> like Sir Patrick Stewart. Professor X? Like, what happens in that brief moment in time? Does he get sent back in time and then has know. to live we'll never know. a couple it's years over. of his life? <laughs> I mean, what if they come out with a movie explaining that? I like I that. Want, I don't want to. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I mean, it's over. I yeah, want, I, I, th- I, I honestly think they're going to cancel New Mutants. I don't think, I don't think I don't anyone think has interest in New out. Mutants anymore. After Hugh left, <laughs> who, has, who has interest in After X-Men? Hugh left. <laughs> After Hugh left. Yeah. Anyway... Joker. <laughs> but, Joker. Let's talk about Joker. Let's talk about this movie, Joker. Um, what do you guys think about him playing the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix? I loved him. It was amazing. I think he was. It was. It was interesting because he doesn't really, you know, again, he doesn't really become the Joker until the end of the movie. But you know, him playing the character Arthur Fleck, I thought was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um. Just I I merely I really haven't seen Joaquin Phoenix in a lot of other roles, so I don't really have a great grasp on like his his range as an actor or anything. Um, but you know, uh, like you know, like someone like Heath Ledger, uh, it se- it seems like that like playing a role like that, you kind of really need to get into the mindset of it, and it's really kind of taxing as an actor. I think I was telling so, you I, in the theater after we like. I guess it was before we watched it. Yeah. Um, that we didn't really know like how how good it was gonna be. Yeah. Um, because we kept hearing different things, but what um what I loved so much about Heath Ledger's performance is that when I watched him being Joker, I could not tell that it was Heath Ledger. Yeah. Playing he just Joker. disappears into the role. It was Joker. Like that's a whole different person. Mm-hmm. That's it's there's no like actor left he is a completely different character when he is portraying joker yeah and i i mean walking phoenix did a good job at that yeah i I think the best part about walking phoenix was like he got the laugh down so good (laughs) i feel like he probably had the best laugh out of all of the jokers Mm because like it just felt like it gave me chills when he laughed Mm -hmm. i'm just like oh shit he's about to kill someone yeah and like the like you know it was it was odd to me. There were there were a lot of things about the movie I guess that were odd at first, and then they make more sense as the movie goes on, and then in the end you end up satisfied. Yeah. Like you know the the laugh like you know it being a a disorder. I was like you know oh okay, okay. I, like I'm on board for that. Like you know I, they try I to make that sense make it makes sense. Yeah. But it's like you know I don't. It's like you know. But the joke is supposed did, did, did to they want really to need laugh. To, yeah, exactly. It's like, did they really need to give an origin to the fact that the Joker laughs, and then later on in the movie, he he like you know he's talking to his mom before he kills her, and he's like you know, you told me it was a condition, but it's not, and then like, uh, so like you know like when he laughs at horrible stuff, it's like he's conditioned to think that he's supposed like you know that's a condition that he has, but he's just kind of disconnected, and then later on in the movie, you know. You laugh at doing horrible things. It's just yeah. who he is. <laughs> That's him actually yeah. wanting and then to laugh. The other, I guess the other thing where it's like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense early on, and then eventually later on it makes sense is the girl, where because like the you know the whole movie is like the first time they actually get together, he just kind of like he kills the guys, and then he goes to her apartment and he and just starts the, making out yeah, with her, and she's like, okay with it. I was so confused at that part. I'm like, what's going yeah. on? He and then like, like, they're just like, you know, they have a couple scenes together, and it's just like, you know, I was thinking like, you know, not that not that he's like, I guess a horrible, I mean, he is kind of a horrible person by the end of the movie, but like, you know, like, <laughs> I was just thinking like, you know, what does she see in him? Like, why does she want to be with him? Why didn't she want to be with him in the first place? And then later on, of course, you know, it's revealed that he was never really together with her in the first place. My real question is, did he kill her? Probably. No, I think he did. I think. <laughs> I, think, like, I, think I feel like, like that would have been too because the, co- the, the, the cops kill. were on yeah, their that way. Scene the like, ambulance was on their way he, like, after walked, he left the room. He walked into the the fridge. 
and then close the door and then you can see like cop some top sirens you can hear them going and you saw the the lights flickering mm -hmm. yeah so just, the cops like, showed up like i was like this would be too gruesome the show like all the other deaths were like they were really bad but it's like it's like a mother bad, who it's, like, he, killing a mom you thought like he thought he was in love with yeah it was that is still kind of a little bit weird to me because they don't really do a whole lot like you know they they obviously you know like establish that he has like a, like some mental issues but he they don't really go i mean I, m I might be forgetting something it's been a while since i see, i've seen the movie but i don't really remember them ever going into the fact that he has like some sort of like you know like i don't, I don't really know what you would call it i guess like some sort of dementia or something where yeah. he just imagines things that aren't really there well because that just that's probably from him just being driven mad yeah and i mean he was as a kid like beaten by yeah. the by the mom's boyfriend or something like mm -hmm. that um but i don't know if that really gave him that condition that he's in i think the whole the whole movie threw me off because like you you go in expecting a person who's crazy and you expect to see him just get crazy mm -hmm. to the point where he's like like trying to rule this city and then you immediately they just show you this guy who who has some is issues but they're rationalizing him they give him like a, a condition why he's to why he's laughing they give him like some some like per person in his, in his life the the girlfriend yeah that is like taking interest in him and helping him and then you just it, it kind of like tricks you at the beginning to thinking he's just a normal person who like i i don't know i guess he's not really as crazy as you think and then boom everything's taken away he's he's actually has the mental disorder yeah his mom was lying to him that girl was never there i think it's he just really, doesn't really have anything to lose that was the best way for them to go about it yeah and i think that the the ending i have i i, I told a, a lot of people this um the the ending on the talk show is the most shaken up i've been in a movie since the ending of infinity okay. war because I, it's like i kind of had an idea of where it was gonna go because i didn't think he was gonna kill himself on the tv show so i assumed mm -hmm. he was probably gonna kill the host but still just being in you know he goes out on the talk show and there's the whole thing about like the clowns like the controversy and everything and then he just says you know like i killed the you know that he killed the two people on the subway and then like you know just just from then it's just really like tense and uncomfortable but you kind of also feel like he has control over the situation i guess which isn't really something that he has a whole lot throughout the rest of the movie i feel like that part like it was like that last 15 20 minutes it yeah. was just like i was like shaken up but it was also so good to, yeah like it was i was like of like um he just killed a talk show host yeah and it's like, scary it's scary too like just watching him like you know like he pulled like they didn't like test him or anything he just pulls out a gun and he's like Fuck. yeah there's... and then he starts talking <laughs> into the camera <laughs> Because I think there's two parts to the Joker as, like, a character. There's, like, his mindset mm -hmm. where you have to be, like, sort of driven crazy and mad. And then there's, like, the actual practical things that he does mm -hmm. in, in the comics and in, like, the movies and shows he's been in. Like, he does actual, like, crazy things that I didn't think I, I, I could see Joaquin Phoenix doing mm -hmm. in that movie up until, like, that point. That he like pulled the gun out and was all charismatic on the show, like he 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 went out and started dancing and kissed the lady yeah. and then sat I down. I forgot about that. And had, <laughs> he had like the the back and forth with Murray and then he straight up shot Murray and then was just fine with it. Like, yeah, yeah. I could see him being the Joker now. Yeah, because I guess another part of it is I guess just the unpredictability of it. Yeah, like you don't really. Even if you have some sort of an idea of what he's gonna do, you're not entirely like certain. <clears throat> so 
introduce you more kind of just, anarchy. Yeah, you kind of just have to go along for the ride and just experience it. Uh, I just thought that last scene of him, it's like, it's scary, but it's satisfying in the context of the movie. Yeah. Uh, just when he becomes that character. He had enough. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. And Walking Phoenix also did, because he's probably not going to come back for that. <laughs> yeah. I so. just think it's so funny that <laughs> every single um, interview that I've seen, like every single like talk show I've seen Walking Phoenix been on to talk about Joker, yeah. he seems like uncomfortable yeah. on the talk show just like he was with yeah. Murray. <laughs> and it, it, all the comments are like I don't know expecting him like... to like pull out a gun and shoot the host. <laughs> I don't know if he's like memeing on everyone. I read something because there was a thing with him like on Jimmy Kimmel where like oh I saw he that. was talking yeah he was like talking well, about played, like he had like a they back played, like a behind the scenes that like it made him uncomfortable watching yeah. it because he so... wasn't expecting anyone to see it yeah. And so they played it, and he's just sitting there like, I want to get out of here. Yeah, no, he's, like, saying, like, he's, like, apologizing to the guy, and he's, like, it sounds, and Jimmy Kimmel's, like, it sounds like it's his fault. He's, like, no, it's not his fault. Don't say that. But then on, like, but on Jimmy, it was Jimmy Kimmel that played the scene, but on Jimmy Fallon, he was, like, completely fine. He was, like, joking around with I read somewhere that the, the thing on Jimmy Kimmel was staged, but I also kind of think that that's just they're damage just control yeah like because they don't want people to think that there was like a problem yeah. but it's kind of obvious that there was like there was there was another part of that inter that same interview where i guess i think and if i remember correct Joaquin phoenix was talking about like his background in like break dancing or something uh and jimmy kimmel's making jokes like you know like oh like you in a room by yourself like in a piece of cardboard or something and Joaquin Phoenix is like, you know, he's like, he literally just said, like, you know, completely seriously, like, you're making fun of it, but it was serious to me, you know? It just, it just seemed like... God, I hate I Hollywood know. sometimes. <laughs> it's just, like, sometimes you just have to know when to stop. Yeah. And I guess that's also a theme of Joker. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta, you have <laughs> to know when to stop. This podcast, just, too. <laughs> just pull back, don't be an asshole to people. You gotta know. And people like Joker won't arise. Yeah, you also gotta know, like, who, who you're interviewing... He was the Joker, man. He's gonna pull a yeah. gun out on you. We brought him on the show just to make fun of him. I mean, what do you get when you cross? <laughs> the... <laughs> what do you get when you cross the Joker? All right. What do you so, get? I think I've pretty much said all I have to say about this Me movie. Too. Why so. do you, Why did he touch little Bruce? She wanted to make him smile. All right. I He's think not exactly good, good at it, <laughs> <laughs> but. Chris, I what? think this is a good time to end it before Gabe says anything else weird. <laughs> I'm right. going to <laughs> say something to <laughs> little Bruce. It, it was... It was... Kind of weird that Bruce Wayne had absolutely no reaction to his parents getting gunned down. He was just like... He just kind of stood there. That's probably why he turns into Batman. I mean, he also just... Yeah, let, that's the moment he <laughs> lost all of his emotions. He let the weird man with the clown nose walk, come up to him and reach through the gate and grab his face. I just kinda, yeah. He's just... They're just like, like, literally the only direction that that kid got is like, okay, for this scene, we want you to stand here and not do anything. <laughs> just let the man touch your face. <laughs> just let the man they kill just, your parents. They wanted to bring all attention away yeah. from him. And it's just about, it's just about He's joking. got, I mean, he do, I mean, I was going to say he's got to be there. He doesn't have to be there. It's just, an, I guess, an Easter egg or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Because anyway. if they're not planning to really continue, yeah, just you know, it it, it is. A, I mean, a, unless the bat, unless they're lying to us, and the Batman movie in twenty twenty one is the sequel. We'll see. I guess I could see that the, I could see them wanting to have some sort of end credit scene where everyone goes like, "Oh shit!" Like when they realize it was connected the whole time. But I guess we'll see. So, final thoughts. Um, let's rate the movie. Mm, out of what, like ten? Yeah, and whatever you want. Uh, it gets like, like, like nine pizzas out of <laughs> eleven pizzas. Why pizzas? Because oh. I'm really hungry. We really want to eat that pizza. There's pizza. <laughs> um, I'm gonna rate it. I think about nine point three pizzas out of ten pizzas. 
Why that? That's a really oddly specific number. Yes, because you have to cut the pizza out of the middle to get nine point three. I still don't really understand. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way you went uh, about that. On a boring scale, uh, four out of five. It's really good. Um, oh, <laughs> I thought that was the on opposite. A, on a, on a, <laughs> no, on a on a on a on a, on a on a wacky fun time scale, uh, I give it oh. a, a happy face out of Joker. Oh God! Oh, well, that's pretty cool. I I'm it's about to head cool. out. Yeah. All right, Nick's gone. <laughs> so, so Nick right. actually left. No, he's forever. he's just standing in the distance. He's yeah, he's leaving. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening thank to this so podcast. Uh, I guess the quality remains to be seen. If you enjoyed it, thank you. I guess if this goes up on YouTube, uh, leave a like. Consider subscribing or following us wherever this gets posted. If you want more of this, we're probably going to do more of it in the near future. Recommend uh, what you want us to talk about. Talk yeah. about we need ideas, please. <laughs> oh, I'm back, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah. Anything uh, current? Yeah, we're What's going we'll on? probably. I I think the plan is right now we want to sort of have some sort of regular alternation between reviewing movies and reviewing games. Uh, but you know, I feel like there's usually more current movies to talk about that we've all watched than current games to talk about that we've all played. So. We can all we'll, talk we'll, about we'll some just, different game. Yeah, yeah. Each time. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see what where, happens. We'll see where the wind blows. But uh, for now, uh, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace out. Goodbye. Bye bye.